right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here in the Facebook group, the Digital Mavericks Facebook group for another live stream. I've got new headphones and they are driving me crazy. Today, we're going to talk all about how to use paid discovery to sell growth plans. And I'm going to give you some very practical tips. So if this is working, can you please let me know in the chat uh, what country you are from, just so that I can get an affirmative that this is working. Uh, I can see it in the group here. I just want to make sure that you guys can see me and hear me. While we funk out to some Starsky and Hutch, it's not really. Hey, Zach Stepek is here from Convicio. Hello, brother. By the way, uh, just a little reminder, Convicio, uh, a partner of ours at Mavcon coming up in San Diego in a few weeks. I am so excited that a little bit of weed just came out. Uh, that's how excited I am to be hanging out in San Diego with Zach and Tom and the crew from Convicio. And also, the, <laughs> I just saw the transcript. It said a little bit of weed just came out. No, a little bit of we just came out. That's how excited I am. Uh, also, Convicio um, are managing a support channel in our Slack for our Mavericks Club members. How nice is that? They um, are hanging out in our Slack channel, answering questions about WordPress, WooCommerce, hosting, scalability, all that kind of good stuff. And our Mavericks Club members get direct access to Tom and Zach and the entire team at Convicio. Wow, the Facebook counter is freaking out and uh, trying to keep up with uh, how many people like us on Facebook. There we go. All right, so, uh, yes, Convicio also have a great webinar tomorrow. Anna Booth will pop some details in around that. Look at that, 14,128 people, 14,128 followers on Facebook, whatever that means. I don't even know what that means. All right, so let's dive in. We're going to talk about uh, using paid discovery to sell growth plans. This has been the number one question that we get. Oh, there we go. That headphone just finally decided to stay in and now I can hear my self in all my beautiful dulcet glory. Uh, the number one question we've been getting from people is, well, how does paid discovery and growth plans, how do they work together? Troy's been banging on about paid discovery for months and now he's banging on about growth plans. How do these two things work together? I thought it was pretty obvious, but apparently I haven't done a very good job of communicating this. So today's presentation and training is all about how to use growth plans to sell paid discovery. So the first thing I want to do is I want to dive in as to why you should be even thinking about this, right? And of course it is because the wonderful, wonderful world of recurring revenue. Recurring revenue in your business is oxygen. If you do not have recurring revenue in your business, you are a few bad months away from going broke. I cannot imagine. When I first started my, my uh, journey as a WordPress whatever it was, consultant, implementer, I'd use the word developer very loosely. When I started out in 2000 and whatever it was, I very quickly grew a team of other developers, designers, project managers, and I all of a sudden had 30 grand a month in payroll uh, that I had to meet before I was making any profit. So every, and I had no recurring revenue. It was very stressful. Every month I would wake up and go, right, I gotta go and find 30 grand worth of projects just so I can pay the team. That's before I make any money. Not good. And recurring revenue, uh, I can tell you, just changes your stress levels and gives you more predictability. Now, I know I'm preaching to the converted here, but there are some people in this group that don't have enough recurring revenue to be functioning and surviving and thriving without the stress of having to find, you know, 5, 10, 15, 30, 40, 50, 100 grand a month in project revenue. So recurring revenue really is the holy grail. And when I say recurring revenue, I don't mean reoccurring revenue. I don't mean repeating revenue. Reoccurring Re revenue is revenue that keeps coming back to you because clients are happy. It's called repeat business, right? They buy a website, they come back for SEO, they come back for an email marketing campaign. That's reoccurring revenue. That's different to what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about recurring revenue. Recurring revenue is subscription-based. You don't have to raise an invoice. 
You've got the client's credit card, payment details, or direct debit bank account on file, and every month, money automatically gets transferred from their bank into your bank so that you guys can keep doing the good work that you're doing for them. That is recurring revenue, okay? So, recurring revenue, the holy grail of all business models, okay? Now, if I can get uh, Canva to play nice here, I'll move to the next slide, which is, what do you do with that recurring revenue? You hire a team of A players. You hire a team of A players, right? And why do you do that? So that you don't become the bottleneck in the business that actually stunts the growth of the agency. So you reuse your recurring revenue to hire a team of A players. The beautiful thing is once you've got recurring revenue, you can forecast into the future and have a look three months down the road and say, well, if we keep growing the way we're growing, we're gonna need to hire another client success manager. By the way, we've just hired another client success manager in the States, Samantha Johnston from Southern California has joined us as a client success manager. She is here in the group. I'm super excited that Sammy J has joined the team here as a client success manager. And we know that we needed to hire a client success manager because our current team were getting to capacity and we can project the growth and we can have a look at what's happening. We're all recurring revenue here, right? So we know that that business is gonna to continue to come in, the revenue is gonna to continue to grow, therefore it is in the budget to hire a new team member. So you use your recurring revenue to hire a team of A players and then you remove yourself from the agency. And when I say remove yourself, I don't mean, you know, that you go and sit on a beach and sip pina coladas, although if that's what you want to do, that's fine by me. There's no judgment here. What I mean by remove yourself is you systematically remove yourself from key functions in the business. So you may not be doing the development anymore. You may not be... Uh, doing the project management anymore. You might not be getting the content from the clients. You might not be approving, getting approvals from clients. You might not be the one that's actually buying the media space in meta ads. You might not be the one that's writing the copy. You might not be the one that's actually doing the SEO on the website. You might not be the one that's buying the backlinks. <gasps> Did I say buying backlinks? Oh, I'm sorry, silly me. Of course, nobody buys backlinks, do they? No, because it's against Google's terms. You might be... Uh, you might not want to do the account management anymore. You might not want to talk to clients anymore. Or maybe you want to just go build shit in WordPress or build funnels and automations in high level and you don't want to do anything else in the business so you hire a salesperson, you hire a project manager, you hire a client success manager. You remove yourself from those parts of the agency that you don't want to be involved in anymore, okay? I can tell you full transparency in this business, Agency Mavericks, what I do these days is I produce content, I host the podcast, I go live once a week here in the group and flap my gums about something I think is gonna be helpful. I mentor the team, I talk to my CFO about where the money is and how much we've got left over. Um, I don't do sales, although randomly, uh, last week I actually had someone pop up and wanna have a chat with us pretty quickly and uh, I was the only one around, so I actually picked up the phone and we had a conversation and, and uh, he joined Recurring Revenue Accelerator, which is very exciting. So. You know, I'll dive in and I'll wash the dishes if no one else is here to do it, but it's not my job to do sales. It's not my job to do client success. It's not my job to onboard new clients. It's not my job to edit the podcast. It's not my job to promote these live streams. It's not my job to, you know, run the ads. It's not my job to book the hotels when we come out to San Diego for MavCon. Thank you very much, Anna Booth, who does an amazing job of managing MavCon, right? The team here, are performing the key functions. So now this is a, we can have a philosophical conversation about what you're supposed to do with your time, if you like. We can have that philosophical conversation because I know a lot of people are scared of removing themselves from key functions in the business because then they're like, well, what am I going to do? What's my job if I'm not building blocks in WordPress or uh, building automations in high level or onboarding new team members or clients or getting content from clients or pushing the buttons around the screen, what's my job? Well, your job is to think. Your job is to come up with ideas to help grow the business. Your job is to network, is to build out your professional network and find joint venture partners and find ideas and ways that you can acquire new clients and come up with ideas that you can make your products and your services better for your existing clients, right? That's your job, if you want it to be. Otherwise, you can just go, as I said, you can just go and frig around with Elementor all day if that's what you want to do and build websites for clients and that's totally fine. Then just hire other people to do everything else, okay? Now, 
So let's just recap. What have we learned here? Not much. What have we learned? Recurring revenue. Grow your recurring revenue. Grow your recurring revenue. Use that recurring revenue to hire a team of A players and then systematically remove yourself from the business. All right, how do we do this? Well, we have a, by the way, we have a very uh, special uh, training series that launches tomorrow. Please keep your eyes on the group here and on your email inbox. And uh, we have a very special training that goes out over the next week, uh, which is very exciting. It's all about how to use growth plans to grow your recurring revenue. Part one goes live tomorrow. It's growth plans equals recurring revenue. I'm gonna break down exactly what a growth plan is, and I'm gonna show you the simple maths, the simple mathematical equation to add, uh, I need to come back to my screen here because you can't see my slides. There we go, push the right button, Troy. Uh, part one goes live tomorrow. It is all about growth plans and how to add a million dollars a year in annual recurring revenue from using growth, by using growth plans, right? Part one of the training goes live tomorrow. Part two goes live next Monday. It's all about how to scale growth plans using the right best practices so that you can scale growth plans profitably without burning out. Part three goes live next Wednesday. It is the full growth plans mind map. I've built a very detailed mind map that shows you everything you need to get growth plans set up in your business. And then part four, uh, which goes live next Friday is an invitation to join us in the growth plan method where you can get our help to help you implement growth plans into your agency. All right, so growth plans are the fastest way to grow your monthly recurring revenue. We've just spoken about why recurring revenue is important. Growth plans are the fastest way to grow your monthly recurring revenue, okay? Just coming over here to the old Facebook to have a look at the comments to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Yes, all right, very good. Uh, so, growth plans are the fastest way to grow your monthly recurring revenue. Now, uh, here's how paid discovery and growth plans work together. Paid discovery, and I talk about this in the growth plan method, paid discovery, and I talk about this in the paid discovery method as well, paid discovery is where is your job is to be a journalist, okay? Not the genius, your job is to be a journalist. I'll tell you when to be a genius in a moment, and it's very easy to be a genius, actually. If you do this job right, Right? It's very easy to become the genius. You know, journalists are quite often seen as an authority in their local community. You meet, you see a journalist in real life and you're like, oh, wow, there's that, there's that girl who reports on the thing every night on the news. She's really smart, isn't she? Or she's really good at reading a teleprompter, right? You think she knows all the facts? Of course she bloody doesn't. She's a journalist. Her job is to ask questions and do what is called collect good tape. That is the job of a journalist. I learned this when I was working on a film crew and we're making documentary uh, short films. Uh, the job of a journalist is to collect good tape, collect a lot of good tape, right? Ask lots of questions, make lots of notes, get lots of answers to those questions. Your job during paid discovery is not to answer any questions, right? Your job during paid discovery is not to answer any questions, and it is not to come up with any ideas, and it is not to, you know, give your client suggestions on how they can solve problems. It's not to show off. It's not to tell them how good you are. It's not to flex your creative muscle or show them case studies or any of that kind of stuff. Your job during paid discovery is to act like a journalist and collect good tape Right, and so collecting, the, the, the analogy here is if you make documentaries, you just go out, you record everything. You collect good tape. Good tape means good video, good audio that you can hear and see, and you bring it all back to the edit suite, and then you start to build a story, all right? And that's your job during paid discovery, is to be a journalist and collect good tape. And then you bring that back to the studio, and you design the strategy to help the client achieve the goals that they told you are important to them during paid discovery. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna freak out here, so before you tune out, let me, just, let me just reassure you of something, okay? Designing strategy is really, really freaking easy. In fact, in last week's live stream, I just showed you how to use ChatGPT to build a custom growth plan for your clients. Don't freak out about the word strategy. And I'm saying this because I used to, I used to freak out about the word strategy all the time, right? I was like, I don't even know what it means. I'm not a strategist. Strategists are like, you know, 
uh, uh, people that work at McKinsey's or, you know, the Price Waterhouse. Like, they're strategists, right? I'm not a strategist, right? And I used to have massive imposter syndrome about the word strategy. Strate- Let me just break it down. Strategy is just the how we're going to get there question, right? So if the goal is to, <clears throat> you know, if the goal is to sell $100,000 worth of hoodies a month through, through our Shopify e-commerce store, the strategy might be, well, let's, let's find a product that costs us absolutely hardly anything. I was going to say something else there. Absolutely hardly anything to make. So let's find our cheapest hoodie, right, and let's put that up online as what's called a loss leader. Let's just sell that thing so freaking cheap. People are like, how do they do that? That's ridiculous. That's so cheap. And we use that to get people into the Shopify store to buy that hoodie for like $9, right? And then there's an upsell to sell them something else. And the strategy is to use Facebook ads to promote the lost leader, right, with beautiful imagery. Just go and have a look at True Classic, by the way. They do this really well. True Classic's a great clothing brand, very successful e-commerce story, right? They use lost leaders all the time. In fact, I'm wearing a True Classic T-shirt right here. Don't buy their jeans, though. They're terrible. Um, their underwear is good and their T-shirts are good. And they sell these T-shirts pretty cheap to get you in the door. And then once you're in the door, they upsell you. And then they email you 8,000 times a day to buy the rest of their stuff. So that's a strategy. The strategy is how are we going to get to $100,000 a month in e-commerce revenue? We're going to run Facebook ads to promote a lost leader. We're probably going to lose money on a customer acquisition on every customer, but then we're gonna make that up on the back end through upsells, emailing the shit out of people, plus we're gonna have card abandon campaigns to bring people back with uh, another coupon. Go and check out Temu as well, T-E-M-U. They are gamifying e-commerce. They are gamifying e-commerce. So you go to Temu and you have a look at um, their, uh, their ads and uh, it's all gamified, right? You get a discount, like it's crazy. They offer you a 80% discount or an 85% discount on one of their products. And the only way to buy it is, is to install the app, right? Let me explain this, it's genius. The only way to, to buy it is to install the app, right? And when you install the app, when you go to install the app, it knows the product that you are about to buy at 80% off. And it says, if you install this app, we will give it to you at 100% off, right? Now, they've just got a warehouse full of, you know, stuff made relatively cheaply, right? Guitar, pedal, like everything, whatever you need. It's ridiculous, right? They've just got crap everywhere, right? Now, listen, in certain parts of the country, in certain parts of the world, they've been making, they've been manufacturing stuff for the rest of the world, right? So in China, they've been manufacturing stuff for the rest of the world for years, and they've learnt how we design and make stuff, physical products, right? Phone covers, right? Reading glasses, right? Keep cups, you know, little bells, right? Guitar pedals, guitars, amplifiers, roadcasters, you know, in-ear monitors, whatever, doesn't matter. They've microphones, cameras, they've figured out how we design and, and they've been making it for us for years. Timu have now come across and gone, actually, we don't wanna make it for you so that you can put, it. we'll just sell it direct to the consumer, right? Because there's so much margin in buying physical product made in China and selling it into a country like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the UK, America, there's so much margin. A lot of that margin is used in marketing to promote the thing. So Timu have said, well, screw it. We're just gonna sell it direct to the consumer. We'll sell it to you at 80% off. If you install the app, we'll give it to you for 100% off. You just pay the shipping. And now I've got the app installed on my phone. And guess what their strategy is? To sell me more shit through the app with constant notifications. Right? Oh, look at this is on sale today. Oh, look at this is on sale today. For the next 15 minutes, you can get this at 80% off. Right? So their strategy is app installations. That's the strategy. And they're using gamification, discount codes to get as many app installations as possible. That's strategy. All right? So your job is to design the strategy based on 
the good tape that you collected while you were being a journalist during paid discovery. Now, of course, if you've got the paid discovery method, you will know how to do this because you'll have the workbook, you'll have the slide deck, you'll have the script, you just follow the bouncing ball, you collect good tape, you come back, you use the templates that we give you, the Google Docs, the Kanban boards, whatever it is to design the strategy. I'm gonna show you an example of this in a moment. Once you design the strategy, you then move from journalist to genius, right? Because now you have this strategy, you understand how the client is going, how you are going to help the client achieve what they want. And by the way, don't get hung up on this, right? You know, it doesn't have to be an award-winning strategy. It just has to be, listen, write this down, okay? I don't do this very often. I don't make you write shit down very often, but this is important. Your strategy doesn't have to be an award-winning strategy and doesn't have to be the best strategy in the world. It just has to be better than the one your client's currently got. And I can guarantee you, if your client is talking to you about this, they don't have a very good strategy because if they did and it was working, they wouldn't be talking to you in the first place, right? So now you go from journalist to genius. And how do you do that? Well, this is how I do it. I just show my clients a Kanban board in click up. Hey, this is what we're going to work on based on what we learned during paid discovery that digital roadmap workshop that we ran last week. And if you've got the paid discovery method, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't, get on over to the paid discovery page and spin the wheel and see if you can win a coupon code to get it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Timu. And uh, then I say, well, here it is. Here's the strategy based on what we learned during, during the digital roadmap workshop. If we were to work to, here's the line I use. You can have this one, write this one down. I know, I'm sorry, I'm being a bit Tony Robbins right now, but this is important, write it down. If we were to work together over the next 12 months, this is what I would help you do. Probably in this order. And I lay it out on a Kanban board for them and I show them. And they nod and they go, oh, that's good. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh yeah, that's, oh, we like that one. Oh, we hadn't thought about that. Oh, that's great. And then I get to the end of it and I say, does this sound like a good plan? And they go, yes. I say, great, would you like my help implementing it? And they go, yes. And then, I upgrade them to a growth plan. And a growth plan is where they pay me every month to help them manage all this stuff on the Kanban board, right? It's pretty straightforward, okay? Uh, that is how you upgrade them to a growth plan. And then guess what I do? I use the exact same Kanban board in ClickUp to help them manage the stuff, yeah? Now I've got some clients that use different project management systems, whatever. They just transfer it into monday.com or Asana or whatever system they're using. It doesn't matter, it's irrelevant, who cares? It's a Kanban board with some custom fields. That's all it is, right? Don't get hung up on the thing, okay? It doesn't matter. You can do this on a whiteboard with sticky notes if you want. Take a photo of it and send it to your client. Look, I moved that sticky note to the done column this week. Woohoo! You can just do this in Slack, doesn't matter, right? So let's, I think we just need to recap before I get into this, right? Let's just recap. Uh, let's just go back to the start here, right? Recurring revenue is the holy grail of all business models because it allows you to hire a team of A players and remove yourself from key functions in the business that you're probably not very good at, right? Uh, we've got a new training coming out this week, which I'll talk more about in a moment. Growth plans are the fastest way to grow your recurring revenue. You use paid discovery and act as a journalist to collect good tape during the paid discovery workshop. You then go back to the studio, you design the strategy. Then you move from journalist to genius you show them the strategy on a Kanban board, you upgrade them to a growth plan, you use the same Kanban board to manage the exact strategy that you just showed them, all right? That's how paid discovery and growth plans work, okay? Yes, so you, Matt, that's right, you manage them as a fractional digital strategist, you pitch yourself as a fractional, thank you, Anna, for reminding me, you pitch yourself as a fractional digital strategist, right, or a fractional CMO, whatever you wanna call yourself, right? I call myself a fractional digital strategist because I don't do offline traditional marketing stuff like design, you know, uh, exhibition booths or do print media or any of that kind of stuff, right? Or radio ads or TV ads, everything I do is on the internet. So I, I, frac I fraction myself, I position myself as a fractional digital strategist Right, and yes, Zach, go wide, go deep, go wide, go deep, go wide, go deep equals get good tape. 
Go wide, go deep equals get good tape. That's how you get good tape is you go wide, go deep. You ask lots of questions, right? So uh, now I did mention we've got this training coming out this week. It starts tomorrow. Part one is growth plans equal recurring revenue. What is a growth plan exactly? And the simple math equation to add $1 million in annual recurring revenue to your agency by using growth plans. Part two comes out next Monday. This is all Melbourne time, by the way. Right. Part two comes out next Monday and it's how to scale growth plans, the best practices for scaling growth plans to seven figures a year plus without freaking yourself out, getting overwhelmed and also staying profitable. And there's a little secret weapon I'm going to share with you called growth blueprints in part two of that training. Part three is the growth plans mind map, which is the complete mind map of all the moving parts you need to have dialed in so that you can grow the growth plan part of your business to a million dollars a year in annual recurring revenue. And then part four, which goes live next Friday, is an invitation to come and work with us in the growth plan method to get this dialed in your agency and move faster and avoid all the mistakes that most people make when they do this. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how paid discovery work with uh, growth plans. I hope you're as excited about this as I am. I do need a beverage. I've had a couple of caffeines already this morning, James, and um, I won't be partaking in any other beverage until later this evening when I'm hanging out with my band here in the studio, The Voodoo Vibes, and we're having a rehearsal on the stage right there with our new in-ear monitors, which I'm very excited about. We're going to have a silent rehearsal. So there you go. All right, uh, keep the conversation going here in the group. Devon wants to dial it in. Reach out to Natalie or Anna in the group here, Devon, if you've got any questions about growth plans or paid discovery, they can get you connected with all the right resources. Kelly Berryman's here. She's one of our Mavericks Club members. Hey, Kelly, nice for you to uh, tune in. There we go. Uh, I'll see you all again next week. Uh, in the group here. Keep your eyes on your email and the group here for the notification and the announcement of that first training that goes out live tomorrow morning, our time. All right, love you all, and I will see you again on the flip side. I'm Troy Dean. Let's get to work. <laughs>